Hi viewers, uh, welcome you back to Uran channel. I am sure you must have been thoroughly enjoying the content of Uran, which is change management for all. Uh, we have always been trying hard uh, to bring the best of the interviews insight into the quality education segment by interviewing the top educationalists from different parts of the country. Today, I am here at Delhi Public School, Dhanbad, and going to talk to none other than the mentor of the school, uh, Mr. K. B. Bhargava, sir, uh, who has more than three decades of uh, experience in the education industry and has been mentoring several batches for last several years. Today, we are going to ask him several kinds of questions which are a big challenge to the education industry today and how are we going to tackle that. So, let's welcome him to the Uran channel. Uh, today we have uh, Mr. Ran Rashmi Ranjan with us in our campus. Uh, so we welcome uh, Mr. Ranjan. Uh, he has been here for conducting one program that is Uran. And uh, he will be today interacting with our faculty members, discussing about the various aspects of the school management, classroom handling of the students, the various challenges that the school might be facing, the teachers might be facing in their day-to-day -day dealing, the problems that the ch parents and the children, they face and the teachers, they those who handle those children, they are facing those problems. Those problems, Mr. Ranjan will be sharing with, with the faculty members, it will be an interactive session with my faculty and I am I'm very sure about it that uh, as I have heard and I have seen over the years that the reputation that Uran is enjoying. So it is going to be a very, very fruitful session with my faculty members and we are going to get the best today and my teachers will definitely be enriched when they go back home today. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for a warm reception at this school. Uh, Uran feels really honored to talk to you today uh, and get the uh, best out of your experiences today to the uh, to our viewers who have always been looking forward for the quality content. Uh, sir, my first question to you is, how has your journey been since your school days till today when you are mentoring such a huge number of students of today's generation and what are the current challenges do you face in day-to-day -day activity when you are administering, mentoring the teachers and students in comparison to the students and teachers maybe like two decades back, three decades back or during your generation, where during your era when you were going to school. So we would like to get a, a glimpse of the detailed comparison between the two generation where you have been the link between and the brand called DPS which is being mentored by you at Dhanbad. Uh, I should say that uh, I was very much privileged to have both my parents well educated and they were from education only. My father was having uh, enjoying a very good status as far as in the field of education is concerned in uh, the city of metropolis I should say in of Delhi and uh, my education right from my standard one to my amphil in education has been in Delhi only. Now in our time you know uh, there were uh, not many schools uh, with the public school background. There were the schools from the Delhi administration and some private schools that type of situation was there where there was not much scope for enjoying that privilege I should say of having the co-education system as well as the public school system where there is more exposure to both the scholastic and co-scholastic aspect of the personality and the, the student is engaged most of the time and a balance is being maintained between these two and the children are getting an opportunity to interact and to understand the concept of coexistence in the society 
when you are in a co-educational system. That privilege was not with us. Then right coming to my higher education, I, uh, here I would also like to mention that I also pursued my school education through CBSE only. And once I passed out from there, I just joined one college in Delhi University for my honors in chemistry. I completed that, then I completed my post graduation in chemistry from Hansraj College of Delhi University. And then I did my B.Ed, M.Ed and a bill in education all from Central Institute of Education, Department of Education, Delhi University. The beginning of my career as a teacher was incidentally was also in Delhi only. I started from there in one of the institutions, I should say the premier institutions of DAV group of schools. I worked there for nearly four years before shifting to uh, Ansel's group uh, in uh, one school by the name of Chiranjee Bharti School as academic coordinator where that uh, position was equaling to the vice principal's position. Then I worked in SDM school in Sonipat for five and a half years as principal before coming finally to Delhi public school on 7th of August 2003. And till date I am with this uh, school and uh, over the period of time I have seen there have been many changes. In our time there had not been the opportunities of so many uh, uh, systems that have, uh, now has emerged out like digi boards. These were uh, not uh, in our time. We were having chalk and talk method. Most of the time the teachers speaking, children listening to them and not sharing much, no interactive sessions. But in my 90s, I should say, when I joined this thing, the trend changed and this computer education and all these things got a one uh, significant place, I should say, in the field of education, where the children and the parents, they understood the importance of computer education, online systems and uh, uh, ERP systems, digi boards and all these things came into existence. And then the concept of with the, all these things, of course, technology comes to our aid. But at the same time, there are some disadvantages also that leads to the very serious crime by the name by cyber crime and all these things are also coming up. Now I find that the children, unfortunately, are not able to keep a balance between the use and misuse of the technology and they are falling into the when easy prey in the hands of such culprits, those who are associated with cyber crime. In the society also you will find that nowadays there are so many bank scams and all these things taking place. All this is because you might have heard that uh, somebody has taken away the whole amount from the account, the hackers, they are taking away your money. So we, ha uh, we have to tell and train our children for this cyber security. On one side, technology comes to your aid, makes, facilitates your whole entire education system, the entire teaching learning system. And on the other hand, you have uh, the things uh, on Facebook and all these things, whatever you want to write about your teacher, whatever disrespect or respect or whatever you want to say about your teacher, you can always speak about that. But that freedom, I think, uh, discipline should be there and the children should learn that we are from a country where we had a very beautiful Guru Shishya Parampara and we should stick to that. They are not understanding that element of indiscipline that is cre creating, uh, creeping in. 
in the system nowadays i find that is a sorry state of affair and though uh, children are very much aware now they know that what they are doing what they intend to do and in what direction they want to go sometime um, i should go ahead by saying that also that they are not even listening to their parents while choosing their streams in class 11 this is you don't know i know that what i have to do in my life how i have to start in what way i have to go and sometime there are some unfortunate decisions the person may not be meant for that particular stream but just by looking at the peer group and the, the uh, pressure from the parents sometime uh, they opt for a wrong stream and that leads leads to disastrous results also and the child goes into this depression frustration and just in the end i should say he finds that he is a mismatch for all the things in the society thank you sir for giving the insight on the first question what comes to my mind sir in today's scenario as you rightly mentioned about school violence you talked about crimes in the society cyber crime various kinds of uh, maybe uh, the target audience or the target customers are the students only maybe uh, the filthy content available online whatever so now the question the main question before the society is or before the school indeed is is it the fault from the parent side that means is parenting not up to the mark or does the school need to take more responsibility on itself or in simpler word classroom management needs to be more Uh, vigilant more organized so that the students uh, really enjoy coming to the school and they are safe in the society so who needs to play a major role kindly guide us ahead thank you we have need to understand that education is the collective responsibility of all the stakeholders it cannot be of parents alone it cannot be of teachers alone it cannot be school authorities together it has to be taken together when we are fixing or deciding about the responsibilities how we have to handle our children and what is going wrong when we are handling our children we need to understand that first of all in this highly materialistic world <clears throat> the parents they have enough of money and all these things affluence is there both parents working going to offices enjoying a good status uh, maintaining uh, all luxuries in the life uh, all rooms are uh, well maintained child has got a separate study room a laptop is being provided everything has been provided but not the quality time that is the birth right i should say of child to get the quality education from the parent that is the most important thing nowadays the parents they have everything for their children but they don't have time they are sending their children to the tuition centers coaching classes spending huge amount of money but they will not be sitting with their children for spending some quality time that is the biggest lapse i should say i tell you blaming one another is not a solution school may be blaming your parents parents may be blaming school that is not the solution children is with us for 6 hours 18 hours the child is with the parents but that cannot relieve the school of the responsibility that also i would like to add the school also has that equal responsibility of the building of the character and personality of the child and to see that the child picks up the right direction at right point of time and moving in a direction that will be fruitful for him and make him a worthy citizen and useful member of the society and that will come only when we all together will be working on that 
and see that the child is growing in a very congenial atmosphere both at home as well as school. So I understand that one part I have talked about that is of parents. Now coming to school, I think that teachers also and the school management, they also have to share their responsibility. They should understand that what is expected of them by just putting the responsibility on the parents is not a solution I have told you. The mentoring and monitoring part both has to be there on the part of the teacher also. The authorities should give free hand to the teachers also to see that he can take good care of the child. That has to be there. See what are his activities, what is his requirement, from what background he is coming, whether he is coming from rural background, urban background, maybe socially, maybe economically backward section, EWS category or any such of thing. He may be like you know that the society may uh, have and hand -ups. That type of situation may be there sometimes. So how to handle that? How to see that they are not developing an inferiority complex on account of that, that I am underprivileged, I am not having what Mr. X is having, that disparity has to be covered by teachers through dialogue, through understanding the child, through uh, monitoring the things and mentoring him as and when required. And the role of the school counsellor is the most important I feel. Whenever a such type of thing comes to his notice, he or she should take charge of that. If the need be there, the student should be talked, parent should be talked and the concerned teacher should also be talked. And then see what remedial measures are required at that level. That is the most important thing. If you really want that the result should come out, we will have to take it seriously and to take care of our children so that our children are the global citizens. This whole world now is like a village, global village you can say, where so much communication is taking place so fast. In a click of a button, you can be connected to USA, you can be connected to Singapore, you can be connected to any part of the world and you will find that this type of scenario, this use of technology in years to come will take much more front seat as it is enjoying at present. And for that, we need to equip our children, but at the same time, the social order of the society should not be disturbed, father should act as a father, child should act as a child, child should not be dictating what father should be doing and what father should not be doing. That is the most unfortunate thing that is happening now a day. We should understand each other as a father and son, mother and son. But my son will be dictating me that is not at all desirable and that will lead to disastrous results one day. Okay, great indeed, sir. Uh, so, uh, my next question uh, to you is, how far do you find moral science as a subject relevant uh, to the students in higher classes? Because I remember in my school days, moral science being taught till class second or third after which it was not incorporated as a subject in any of the classes. But when I grew up, I cleared, I went into the engineering, top college, triple IT and all, went to America, worked for various multinational companies in various segments. I realized it is being used everywhere. Everyone wants a, a, a guy or a girl with good, good and excellent moral values. 
to take on the charges even to work as a team player or as a manager or whatever role you are being put into so don't you think or what has you as a view on this moral science as a subject to be made compulsory at the school level kindly uh, put your views on that uh, well uh, as far as uh, moral education is concerned I personally feel that it should be an integral part of our school education system to begin with. Now, when I talk of school education only, I don't want to confine myself to the four walls of the classroom. I want that the child should be spreading be wings beyond that also. I want that the child should see the world should go for experiential learning and should see that what are the prevalent practices that are there in the society and should share the things that is the most important thing sharing the thing sharing the idea sharing the views whether school whether at home whether with your teacher whether you with your elders unfortunately in india now we are not enjoying the status of a joint family where i understand the importance of dadi ma dada ji nana ji chacha chachi all these relationships were, were of utmost importance they always used to check the child against the wrong doings if he was doing he or she was doing something wrong and not properly in the way she should be or he should be dressed up they used to say no you are not in the right frame you should see that what you are doing and should used to say and on the other hand the parents also used to listen to them rather than blaming each other should not have been there what i personally feel that moral education as i told you should be the integral part of education system but that will not suffice we need to front on both the ends that is the family front and at school level i will never be able to tell the importance of truth honesty your loyalty all these things cannot be taught through books that has to be exemplified some instances has to be quoted only few days uh, we are still celebrating the vigilance awareness we need to understand our culture first what is our culture what is our background what are our, our epics all these things are being taught there what should be the role of son what should be the role of father what should be the role of this thing what is morality when we see the loyalty the love and affection of a brother you cite the example of lakshmana for nothing he left everything for his brother and stayed with him in forest for 14 years these stories are still relevant i mean to say on the other side if we go to negative characters duryodhana the pand kauravas were hundreds in number but bad characters and they doomed fight was there mahabharata fight was there in the battlefield of kurukshetra so we need to tell our children and teach through the society through the stories through our epics through exemplifying through giving the live examples from our uh, life i give you one example of the honesty of highest level one lady one day got one money order 
she was a government servant a money order was there and the postman said that okay madam uh, you please sign it take this pen and please sign it and then i will hand you the money sorry i will not be able to do it today come tomorrow next day the postman again comes and then she takes out a pen signs and takes the money from the postman and the postman a bit surprised why not yesterday it could have been yesterday also you could have signed and this thing. the it was in hindi ki wo jo tum pen mujhe de rahe the wo sarkari उसमें इंक थी सरकार का पैसा था मैं वो कैसे ले लेती मेरा अपना पेन कल खराब था आई गॉट इट रिपेयर एंड यूज दैट इंक दैट इज द ऑनेस्टी ऑफ द हाइस्ट लेवल वी नीड टू हैव द वर्च्यूज एंड वैल्यूज ऑफ दैट लेवल सोसाइटी नीड सच पर्सन द फादर इज एट होम सन गोज आउट and says father is not at home what value i am teaching to whom i should be blaming and who will have the repentance the child is going to be with the parents for many many years and that is they are all dependent you see future is dependent on them for parent child is everything you may become an ias officer you may become a big bureaucrat of any type maybe technocrat or anybody but you are not able to deliver goods because of the moral values that are expected on that position are not with you the honesty of highest level the truthfulness has to be there the gender inequalities that is prevailing nowadays and you must have seen so much of crime being committed we have no respect for the opposite that is the most unfortunate thing and where we will be ending up it is very difficult to predict so many things happening in society a poor child goes somewhere and brutally now that type of thing we should be teaching our students in the school exemplifying that have respect for the opposite think of how you can coexisting coexistence can be there respecting the ideas and views and giving the equal respect to them also they deserve respect if you respect you deserve respect they also deserve respect so it's a in society both male and female both are required and both have a very vital role to play that can't be ignored the violence that is taking place can you imagine a person in delhi at 10 in the night just crossing the red light and a person says that yes why mr so and so you are uh, you have crossed the red light and all these things and his scuffle was there and he takes out and shoots him what is that there is something wrong with our education we could not teach that uh, moral values and understanding and all these things or from where he has learned all these things so when you were talking of at higher education also yes even if you are a iit student i will suggest that it should be integral part of that 
and not only the bookish knowledge has to be provided some project should be undertaken that should be completed honest reporting has to be done and see that how it can be beneficial and fruitful to the society then only this inclusion of the moral education not only up to standard 2 3 or 5 i suggest it should be up to 12 at school level also and at college level also then only you will be getting the desired results otherwise it is not going to be and it will have ill effects on the society at one stage or the other uh, your valuable input on the relevance of moral science in today's education was really insightful uh my final question to you although we can talk in length and with you uh, having a vast and ex extensive experience of more than close to 3 decades now uh, but my final question to you sir where do you see delhi public school dhanbad standing up in the society in next 5 years and how do you think the goal should be set for such a school what next because academically everything we find the school best in the town uh, on the national level as well uh, students doing great job trophies cups and all are uh, you know the replica of the kind of quality education being imparted at the school level but what next is the challenge for dps what goal do you like to put before yourself so that the student and teacher come with some more innovative uh, concepts and ideas in the coming days please guide us i was expecting this question i should say and uh, for any institution there is one vision and mission statement we also have you if you have seen our motto of the society it is service before self and i should say that dps dhanbad is the personal perfect example of that fulfillment of that statement we were established in year 1988 now we are 30 plus years over a period of time you know as i told you in my earlier uh, discussion and dialogue that there uh, were many challenges many things were needed at that time when i joined here here i would like to add that we believe that sky is the limit you cannot set that this is going to be the things in next 5 years honestly speaking but still you should have some goal and targets in front of you on which you should be working as you know that uh, you have also rightly said that uh, academically we are doing excellently and uh, we are uh, number one institution of uh, dhanbad and top 10 institutions of jharkhand and at national level also we are doing wonderfully we have many rated players from chess we have been doing very well in swimming also we have been doing well in cricket also one or two students are at uh, state level also playing at present everything they are doing i would like to set my goals at three fronts first is ac academically when i am talking of academically i am not talking only in the terms of securing very high percentages in board examination board examination may be one criteria of our institutions performance level performance index as we call it pi some school has got an uh, uh, percent uh, 90 performance index some has got 87 point something like that 
schools are rated accordingly i i, I don't say and nothing wrong in it because when uh, so many schools are there in uh, race and so many people are in this and they are thinking that this school is doing ahead of this this is doing that nothing wrong with that only thing is what i would like to see that how my children are performing at el right from elementary stage to my completion of the primary stage you know one test was conducted in various countries that what is the retention level of the concepts that were learned at standard 1 up to standard 5 the basic concepts and you will be shocked to know that india was placed very low our children they were not able to handle and memorize the retention power was very poor i would like to see in my children up to class 5 that this retention factor should come up my children should be able to retain that for a longer period of time then we have a cra system in our dpa society where we assess the students performance at 6 7 and 8 level where we see how much the child can retain the concept that they have learnt at lower classes taking them to a little higher classes upper primary i should say and then finally to secondary and senior secondary that retention factor i would like to see that that should improve in my school the children should be free to share that what next what more is required from our teachers the parent should feel free that what is expected of us what we should exactly be doing what more need to be done whatever we are doing we know it what more is needed we are ready for that we are prepared for that and my teachers they are very talented teachers they are the, i should say that they are the best lot they are highly qualified very experienced the ex, which you go by experience level they they may, 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 none of my teachers may be having barring few teach very few teachers uh, less than 10 years teachers teaching experience in those classes so do they are doing wonderfully on this was my first uh, this thing second my, in academics only i would like that the children should take some projects project works that should contribute to the society and community they should see that they are benefited because ultimately it is for the society we should get the education to whom we are going to educate those who are under privileged they should my student should go and teach those under privileged children <clears throat> and see that how they can get connected with the society and how they can educate them i have got the education i was a privileged one but my next door neighbor poor fellow couldn't get education so it's my responsibility that if i have got something i should be sharing with the others then third is we have a corporate social responsibility towards the society to see that how we can be the integral part of that society and how the under privileged can be brought to the mainstream how we can help out those under privileged families you will be glad to know that every 10th of month we are distributing ration to 20 under privileged families of the nearby villages and that is being done from the dps welfare fund the teachers willingly 
are contributing. Our children, we have a interact club. They are visiting. These activities, I would like, these, this is an integral part of education. <coughs> if, we, if we have something, we should distribute it. <coughs> if I have, uh, say, uh, enough of uh, clothes available in my house, I cannot use it. That should go to orphanage. That thing should come. This is one. Secondly, in 21st century, you will find <coughs> that more and more emphasis will be on computer education, online systems, ERPs, CCTVs, whatever, whatever it is. So, I want that it has need to be upgraded as per the requirement of the time. We should get the best, we should have the security systems in our school. My child should be safe. My child should be getting safe drinking water through RO plants or any other mode. If anything else next comes, we are ready for that. My child should get best. Sanitary. In uh, India, we find that uh, though our government has taken steps to go for the building of toilets and all these things and that awareness has come. But I want that the toilet habits, the child should be learning right from the beginning. And that need to be taught. Nobody else is going to come into picture. We need to help out that poor child. And I want that they should have a respect for environment. We need to take care of our environment. How we can control that? How I will not be contributing of going for the pollution? How I can bring that awareness in masses? My child should be very conscious about it. He should be knowing that what exactly is expected of him, what responsibility is there towards the society. Polythene bags, no, I don't want. We started our campaign for this. Our mass rallies are there from time to time against all these evils. On AIDS day also and on some other days also, as and when the uh, population day, world population day, we are making the society aware. I want that at a large scale these programs should continue and should have some impact on the society. If I can bring some change in the area or society part where I am residing, my school is there, I will be glad to see that. I will be very I will feel very happy and to be very proud of that. The technology part I would like to see that. My te students, teachers, everybody should be getting the best. That is my second target goal, you can say. My third is, I should be able to give the best athletes, best sports person, despite of my not having sufficient playground. We are taking the help from the prestigious IIT railways, Semfer. We are approaching them for grounds, but our children are playing, participating, practicing and on the basis of that they are uh, reaching that height. You can imagine. I do not have a proper uh, cricket playground. My child, Anshuman Lala, he is playing for uh, state. He did it. We have our school team. Uh, we coach them outside also. It is not that we, we school efforts are not there. School efforts are there. I would like to see that that part we should be taking up. And the last and the foremost I should say. 
is I would like to see that my students should be worthy sons and daughters. They should respect women. They should understand his family responsibilities as a father, as a mother. They should be worthy sons and daughters of their parents. I would like to design my school policies and projects around that. I will see that they have the respect for democracy. Democracy doesn't mean that whatever comes to you, the freedom of expression doesn't mean that you say whatever you want to say. Something has to be edited also. Something has to be not to be told not to be shared, outburst has not to be there, never think that what the country has given to you, but what you have given to the country, that is more important, that is what I feel. Great sir, thank you so much for your precious time. On behalf of Uran channel, I would like to thank you uh, for your valuable input uh, on various aspects which we discussed with you, whether it was uh, moral policing, whether it was quality education, whether it was parenting, whether it was classroom management, school management, ethics in the society, use of technology, uh, latest trends, etc. And I am sure there is more to come uh, from your end which we will be sharing with our viewers uh, and enlightening uh, with them with the latest uh, thought processes uh, from your end. Uh, on behalf of Uran channel, let me take this pride privilege to thank your honor and uh, connecting with you in the session uh, through your kindness. Uh, so viewers, I am sure you must have really liked this episode of Uran where we talk to none other than the man uh, Dhanbad, uh, Mr. K.B. Bhargava and we really came to know on so many agendas his uh, detailed insight which is really enlightening enough for every educationalist in India to better the quality of, and standards of education, parenting uh, and infrastructure at school level. I am sure in the coming time we will bring you such legendary figures through Uran which is, the concept is change management for all change at your doorstep. Thank you for your valuable time and keep watching and sharing Uran.